Hey guys, welcome back. So we have cab sitting here now. Uh, this is for the 2001 F-250 project. And I went and picked this up the other day for my brother. So this cab has been completely repaired, fixed, painted, done. So we've got a nice new paint job on here. Uh, I can't remember if he painted it magnetic or if it was dark shadow gray. I'd have to ask him. Uh, I don't remember, but beautiful color. So we got everything set up with this cab and we're gonna get it put on the frame today. So as you can see, this is a whole complete frame now. And we got a new set of wheels and tires off of a 23 F350. And ironically, they were the same color as the cab. They're very, very close. So they look really, really good. But um, you know, we've got the whole engine set in here. All the drive trees put in, it's ready for a cab. And we have the s &B body mounts for this as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get this cab put on the frame here. But I'm gonna show you what I like to do first before we put a cab on a frame. So this is just easy stuff that you can do. It makes your life a little bit easier uh, before you put the cab on. It can kind of save you a little bit of time. So we'll start inside here. We've got some parts laying in here yet. Uh, just some light stuff that goes for the cab. But whole cab harness is put in and try to get as much of this in as possible. Just makes it a lot easier before getting it put on the cab where you have to crawl up into the truck. Whereas this, you can literally come over here and sit down and put everything in nice and easily. <clears throat> so we have extra wiring here for the mirrors that this truck never had so we can put those in and the only thing that I hate about these trucks in this era of truck is your door harness is part of your cab harness which is moderately annoying so you have to pull all of the wiring out of the doors instead of just unplugging the door which is annoying I don't know why they got away from it and then went back to it so another thing you can do with these is the super duties have the uh IDM right here and it's behind the fender which is weird because you have to almost take the fender off to get the stupid thing out but there are two bolts that hold the whole bracket and it falls down out but it just sucks to get to but we go ahead and put the cab or the underhood wiring in here uh, it's a lot easier to put in because you can obviously stand here where the engine should be which is obviously not there and put that in and get it attached to the fender and do all your wire routing here. But the one thing that's mainly the most important here is your uh, outside heater box. So this should be on the cab before it goes in because there are screws, nuts rather, on the inside that hold it on, but it seals up to the cowl on these trucks. So you gotta kinda like fish it up in there a little bit. And with an engine in place and a cab in place, that's harder to do. So we went ahead and we replaced the dryer for the AC system here. And then also these tubes here, which is your uh, evaporator on the inside there. The 7.3s like to cake those shut with grease and oil. I'm not real sure how they managed to do that, but most of the 7.3s that I've torn apart or parted out, they had gunk completely covering one side of the evaporator. So went ahead and changed that for him as well. So we'll come around this way and you can see that the inside heater box is also put in here and a new heater core. So that's something that's preventative maintenance. It's a lot easier to change now than it is with a dash in place. So these are the items that I like to put in a cab before we set a cab on a frame. <clears throat> so as you can see, all the wiring is in place here and once again down this side into each door so this is all stuff that is easily done with the cab off the truck and this makes your life a lot easier for reinstalling everything you're not climbing in and out of the truck or trying to hold something here and then reach around to the other side and hold something over here so it's, it's much much easier to just do this on the ground and we build little carts for these to wheel them around nice and easily. As you can see, these move very, very freely. So that's easy for us to do. Just, so back here at the frame, 
We have a uh, blue top steering box that we put in and because this is the axle swap for this truck technically because this is an 05 style frame with a 7.3 in it now we had to run a different line here so whenever you do something like this you need to make sure that you have the correct lines so we are running the 99 to 04 return but we are running the 05 to 07 uh, booster line from box to booster so that is a change but we can still continue to run all of the other lines, which was nice. So that was good to do. Other than that, you know, this frame's well prepared. It's ready for a cab here. And as you can see, we have some SNB body mounts. So these are your body mounts from SNB here. And they give you these little washers for the top there to give you a little bit of a buffer from steel to steel. But the one thing that I like to do with these is I like to put a little bit of anti-seize between the body mount and the frame mount. Now, do you need to do that? No. But why do I do it? So you can see there's corrosion on this mount. And that's because water gets trapped in amongst all of this, creeps in, gets trapped there, rots out the cab mount. So if you put a little bit of grease, anti-seize, anything that's going to not be eroded by water, something to keep between the plastic, the rubber, the metal pieces here, it will keep that mount from rotting away. Or in theory, it should keep it from rotting away. So as I said, we got some brand new takeoffs for this truck here. These are 2023 F350 wheels, uh, brand new tires. I think they got two or 300 miles on them. A uh, guy brought it home took the wheels and tires off and put, I think, 38s on it. So we got we picked those up and we still have to put the drag link on here. I'm not too worried about getting the drag link put on at this moment because I still have to tighten up this pitman arm <clears throat> and that gets torqued to 350 foot pounds like you've seen in that short video I posted earlier. But we are moving along here with this truck very, very well. And something else that I have to do here is I got to put these heater hoses on. So these heater hoses are just laying here. The problem with uh, putting those on after you put a cab in is, and we'll come over here and show it to you here. So you see how far those are underneath there? Yeah, those aren't real easy to get to and they suck to take off. So. I like to make sure that uh, we put those heater hoses on on the Super Duties before we put the cab on the frame because it just sucks to get back in there. So we'll make sure we put those on first before this cab goes on. So we're getting ready here to put this on. And in this garage here, there's no overhead. It's never meant to have anything overhead. So, ended up selling the tractor that you've seen in previous videos, and we bought this. So this will take all the duties over of the property, and we are using a set of 10-foot fork extensions, and we are gonna use these blankets for a cushion between the paint on the pinch, pinch weld and the fork itself, so that we don't get any marring or scratching with the new paint. And then it also gives it a little bit of a buffer to kind of hold so it doesn't want to slide for some strange reason. But we do have this now. So this will do all the heavy lifting capabilities that we needed to do such as, you know, putting cabs on or picking up axles or anything like that. So that'll save my back and make my life a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up so you can watch us put this cab on and we're going to have some help with that today and we'll go ahead and get it bolted on
All right, so we have the cab set on here. You can see the extension right here. So you have your lower mount. So you'll take your lower mount. You're gonna, let's see here. And you're gonna go ahead and line it up with this bolt. And then you'll turn it until it slides up in like that. And if you can have somebody wind the bolt in, that's good. And then it should, see, it'll stay there then. Okay. So that's how you put these mounts in. And they lock together. So we're going to go ahead and get the rest of these put in. And as you can see, this one's not in yet. So we'll get these put in and then we'll get them torqued down to 60 foot pounds. So like I said, these get to be a 60 foot pounds, but this one's not exactly tight yet. So we're just going to get it snug with the impact. You can see it got snug there. So I'm not going to crank on that. I'm just going to make sure that these are all nice and snug here. So we'll go ahead and do that with all of these. So over here, that one, this one, that one, that one, and this one are 24. And then this one is 22. So you have to change this up for this one. So these are all pretty snug here. And we got to do the core support yet. That is a two person job because there's a bolt that goes up through and a nut on top. So I'm going to have somebody hold that and we'll get that one a little bit later, but we're going to get these torqued down because this cab's exactly where it needs to be. I'll show you how to get it centered up. So what I like to do with these is pick a spot on the frame and then you measure to your rocker. So it's really easy on the super duties because you have this down here. You can see in the camera, it's about 12. It's actually 12 and a 16th. And then this side, as you can see, it's about 12. This side's about 12 and an eighth. So with these, that's pretty good. And to get it perfect would take forever. So same thing here, measure to the frame, to the rocker, and do the, both, do the same on both sides. So as for your core support on these, it's a nut and bolt type thing. So this is a boxed frame. So your bolt goes up through and on the original OEM mounts, it would thread into this bushing. So on the S and B mounts, it passes through this bushing and then gets bolted on the top here, as you can see with this nut and washer. So these all get torqued to 60 foot pounds and this one will have to be a ratchet up through and a wrench on top or a ratchet up through and a torque wrench on top. So that is a cab install for a 99 to 07 and probably farther, but we're just going to leave it at the 99 to 07 years. So we'll go ahead and torque that down, but that's pretty simple and that'll be it for this for the, today. And we did the cab install for this truck. So hopefully you guys liked it and you saw the S and B install and how uh, it is pretty easy. So it's not too, too bad, especially if you have the right equipment, the right tools. So if you like the video, please continue watching, subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. See you next time.